He's the legendary billionaire trader who made a fortune in hedge funds, the mastermind behind one of the most successful and notorious funds on Wall Street. He's been probed for years over insider trading yet never went to prison. How has Steve Cohen repeatedly managed to escape the fate that befell many of his colleagues? Imagine earning over $1 billion in a single year just by moving money around Wall Street. That was reality for billionaire trader Steve Cohen at the height of his hedge fund career. He seemed to have a magic touch, delivering double-digit returns to investors year after year. But those two good-to-be-true profits caught the eye of the FBI and SEC. In this video, we'll explore Cohen's story and the controversies surrounding his multi-billion dollar SAC Capital Hedge Fund. We all know the story. The small town kid heads off to the big city to make their fortune on Wall Street. Steve Cohen was no different. Born in 1956 and growing up middle class in Great Neck, New York, Cohen had an ordinary suburban upbringing. He attended the esteemed Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania, earning an economics degree in 1978. At Wharton, Cohen got his first taste of trading. With just $1,000 of his tuition money, he opened a brokerage account and no doubt enjoyed some beginner's luck. This small account was the origins of what would become one of the largest hedge fund empires in history. After graduating from the prestigious Wharton business program, Cohen landed an entry-level job as a junior trader at Wall Street brokerage firm Gruntal & Company in 1978. Now, you might think an entry-level position doesn't amount to much, but Steve was no ordinary rookie. On his very first day at Gruntal, Steve Cohen made the firm a cool $8,000 in profits. That's like hitting a home run. But that was just the beginning. By 1984, he was pulling in around $100,000 a day for Gruntal, and he was managing a portfolio worth a whopping $75 million. Steve's remarkable talent for trading had set him apart, and he was quickly climbing the ladder. By this point, he wasn't just any junior trader. He had his own trading group at Gruntal. It was like he was running his own show within the big Wall Street arena. And that was just the beginning of Steve Cohen's journey to become a Wall Street legend and the founder of one of the most successful hedge funds in history. In 1992, with $20 million in investment capital from outside backers, Cohen opened the doors of SAC Capital Advisors, named for his own initials, Stephen A. Cohen. The fledgling firm started small, just a dozen employees crammed into a tiny office, a far cry from the 900-plus employee operation it would later become. Over the next two decades, SAC Capital Advisors went from a small seed to one of the grand oaks of Wall Street. At its zenith, it was managing a jaw-dropping $16 billion. SAC wasn't just another hedge fund, it was the place where dreams of incredible returns came true. Cohen, the man behind it all, had a knack for making money. His reputation as a master trader and wealth creator was the stuff of legends. Year after year, he was delivering incredible returns for his investors. Imagine making an average of 30% returns from 1992 to 2009. This kind of consistency didn't go unnoticed. On Wall Street, they started calling him the hedge fund king, and it's not hard to see why. With great success came enormous personal fortunes for Cohen as the owner of what was once a small startup hedge fund. In 2003, he made $428 million in compensation in a single year. Then, in 2005, Cohen earned a staggering $1 billion take-home pay. To put this massive figure in perspective, this is more than the CEOs of some of America's largest companies make in an entire year. Now, what do you do when you're swimming in billions? Well, Steve Cohen decided to indulge his passions, and he had a couple of pretty cool ones. First up, there's modern art. His art collection is like a treasure trove worth over $1 billion, featuring works by legends like Pollock, Picasso, Warhol, and many more. But that's not all. Cohen owns the most expensive sculpture ever sold at auction, Alberto Giacometti's Pointing Man. That beauty set him back a jaw-dropping $141 million in 2015. Just imagine having a piece of art in your living room that's worth more than most people's homes. In 2020, Steve Cohen made a childhood dream come true. 
he bought the New York Mets, a professional baseball team, for an astonishing $2.4 billion. And this wasn't a spur-of-the-moment thing. He'd actually bought a piece of the Mets back in 2012 as a minority owner. But in 2020, he went all in, acquiring a massive 95% stake in the franchise, becoming the principal owner. The ultimate fan move owning the team you've been cheering for since you were a kid. But how exactly did Cohen generate his consistent market-beating returns of 30% year after year? To many peers and industry observers, the results seemed too good to be true. Rumors had long swirled that Cohen's funds engaged in illegal insider trading to gain an advantage over competitors and deliver huge gains. As early as the mid-1980s, the SEC began looking into Cohen's trading activity from his time at Gruntal & Company. The SEC questioned whether Cohen used non-public insider information on corporate mergers to place well-timed trades. Later in 2006, the Wall Street Journal reported on ongoing concerns that Cohen potentially had access to insider tips and non-public information, but Cohen always firmly denied any wrongdoing or misconduct. Starting around 2006, the FBI initiated a massive multi-year crackdown on suspected insider trading at hedge funds dubbed Operation Perfect Hedge. FBI agents used wiretaps, surveillance, and informants to try and build insider trading cases against fund managers and analysts. The investigation worked its way up the food chain over several years, ultimately reaching SAC Capital and Cohen's inner circle of portfolio managers and partners. It was a classic FBI tactic pressure lower-level employees to get them to flip on those at the top. In November 2012, the Fed secured their first arrest linked to SAC Capital former portfolio manager Matthew Martoma. He was charged with orchestrating the most profitable insider trading scheme in history, netting $276 million on illegal tips about negative drug trial data. According to authorities, Martoma obtained confidential clinical drug trial data from doctors involved with two major pharmaceutical companies and traded on that information. The FBI now had evidence of major insider trading under Cohen's watch. The FBI investigation encircled Cohen, charging and convicting several of his top portfolio managers and colleagues but prosecutors always stopped short of criminally charging Cohen himself. Many on Wall Street speculated that Cohen's powerful reputation and connections helped him stay out of jail. In 2013, SAC Capital agreed to plead guilty to insider trading charges, paying $1.8 billion in total criminal and civil settlements. While Martoma and others went to prison for their roles, Cohen himself emerged without facing any criminal prosecution. SAC Capital admitted to general failures in oversight that allowed illegal trading to occur within its walls, but neither Cohen nor his firm admitted to any personal misconduct. As part of the massive settlement deal, Cohen simply agreed to not manage outside investor capital for two years, a relatively small price to pay compared to possible prison time. The outcome fed a perception among some that powerful billionaires like Cohen face separate justice on Wall Street. But with no smoking gun against Cohen himself, he could not be compelled to admit guilt. Instead, he and his firm paid fines so massive they essentially put SAC Capital out of business. After being banned from managing hedge funds, Cohen took a step back from the hustle and bustle for a while. He had amassed an immense personal fortune, and he needed some time to tend to it. But for a man with a passion for trading, Staying away from the game proved to be a tall order. In 2014, Cohen made his comeback, starting a brand new hedge fund called Point 72 Asset Management. The name was a nod to his Connecticut office address at 72 Cummings Point Road. It was a fresh start, a chance to get back to what he loved. Now here's the catch. Although he was technically prohibited from managing outside investor money until 2018, Cohen found ways to get back in the game. Point 72 initially handled Cohen's colossal wealth, but it didn't accept funds from external investors. It was like he was laying the groundwork for something big. When the ban finally lifted, Cohen wasted no time. He managed to raise a whopping $5 billion in fresh capital from new clients within a matter of months. 
In 2018, Steve Cohen made a triumphant return to his billionaire lifestyle. He splurged on a lavish $45 million mansion in the Hamptons, the playground of the rich and famous. But that was just the beginning. He went on to purchase a mind-boggling $155 million mega penthouse on Manhattan's famed Billionaire's Row, setting a record as the most expensive home ever sold in the history of New York City. So after years of keeping a low profile, Steve Cohen is back in the spotlight, making headlines for his extravagant purchases and opulent living. Controversy may continue to follow in his wake, but one thing's for sure, he's determined to do what he loves most, trade and fatten his wallet. And that is the incredible story of the billionaire who managed to stage a remarkable comeback against all odd. Now we wanna hear from you. What's your take on Steve Cohen's journey? Share your thoughts and comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe to Business Explorer Network for more videos like this. If you like this story, you might also enjoy our video about another day trading legend called Navender Sarau and how he caused the 2010 flash crash. Thank you for being part of our community and until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep making history.